Okay, I've hit go live. We shall see. Let's talk about my tea because as always, I'm having some tea. I suppose not always, but that's the idea. And we're fully live. Okay, hello and welcome to Tea and New Book Tuesday. Today's tea is one, <laughs> a sample that I found in an old catalog. <laughs> And I was like, that's interesting. I'll drink that for tomorrow. But it's Republic of Teas Clean Beauty Berry Aloe Tea. It has very little taste. This is the color of the tea, though. And you have to steep it for like five to seven minutes. Um, but it's supposed to make my skin radiant. So if I begin to suddenly glow, uh, don't be alarmed. It's just the tea. As always, we are going to talk about new books coming to Mobile Public Library. We're starting January now because we are oh, we are already looking at what's coming in 2022. I'm already gathering reviews for stuff that's coming out in February and March and they've already sent me these are 2022 titles behind me including this one which comes out in September of 2022. I think it's um yeah, it's by a doctor. So I think there was a lot of research involved and therefore it's probably been years in the planning. But anyway, today we're gonna to talk about the stuff that's gonna be on the new books flyer, which we have, I feel like we had like a lull, a bit in November, definitely in December and January is just jam packed with books. So there were so many things that are going on the new book list that I had to shift some of them to definitely next week, which is Yellow Labels. It's a mystery, suspense, and thriller. And I think some historical fiction, so that's the week after that. Uh, I haven't laid out the weeks to make sure I can do everything I want to do, because we're also going to do... Okay, this is a big announcement. We are going to declare the best book of the year, fiction and nonfiction, and I want you guys to vote on it. So starting tomorrow... Uh, we'll have social media posts on Facebook and Twitter, and there should be something on the event calendar pretty soon that allows you to go to a link where you can vote on what you think the best book of the year was. Yeah, I have 15 titles that were chosen, 15 fiction and 15 nonfiction. They were chosen based on either being acclaimed and having really great reviews or being one of the most checked out books at Mobile Public Library. So a combination of critical acclaim and popularity uh, included is, let me see if I can even take you there. Of course, I have to get it. I don't know if I've got everything up so I can show it to you, but it is, here it is. Let me go into the preview. Now let me go in here and share my screen so you can see what I'm talking about. Yeah, I know I'm being live streamed. I'm aware. I'm the one who hit live stream. It has to tell me like I don't know. Utter nonsense. Okay. This is what it looks like. So we've got, you know, really big books of this year that are automatically going to be on best, best of the year list, like Harlem Shuffle. But also, I put a Patterson book on here. <laughs> I give Patterson so much crap, but you got to remember, he doesn't know and he doesn't care. Anyway, so there's a combination of the four wins, I think, was the most checked out book in fiction, adult fiction, obviously. Um, so I think a lot of people really responded to it. But if your favorite book isn't one of these 15, just write it down here. And on the nonfiction list includes... Mobile's Porch Parade, the oldest carnival in America celebrated in a new style. That's, I think, I mean, I don't want to declare who I think, declare who I think is going to win, but I think the one that's about Mobile should have, you know, should end up there close to the top. And again, if you, one of these 15 books isn't one of your favorite of the year, go ahead and write it in here. We are looking for a book that was published in 2021, though. So, Starting tomorrow, I don't have it yet, but starting tomorrow, you can go ahead and vote on that. And I will announce the winner, I think December 
21st or December 20th, something like that, that Tuesday before Christmas. I will announce who won. So that's exciting. But more exciting is your favorite part of T New Book, Book Tuesday and mine, the giveaway. We once again have a short window in which I can get to the books because I'm doing a quick trip to visit a friend in Arizona and I'm flying out tomorrow. So I have to get any books out that I'm getting to you guys today, like by 5 p.m. today. So first of all, only one book got picked from the six books of last week. So all of those books are still available. I have The Redemption of Bobby Love, A Story of Faith, Family, and Justice, Flesh and Bone, Reflections on Infertility, Family, and Creating a Bountiful Life, Smile, The Story of a Face by Sarah Rule, Five Decembers, which is a mystery set in 1940s Hawaii, or more specifically, Hawaii in December of 1941. So I think you know where the author's going with that one. And a horror novel, Feral Creatures, which is the story of this crow going on adventures in a post-apocalyptic world. Um, because I have so many books to give away, I'm going to go ahead and let you pick two if you want to. Uh, you do have to pick them first. So if you pick something that somebody else has already picked, then I may go ahead and like comment back or respond to your comment offering you something else. These are the new books I'm giving away because there are more. First, we have What Storm, What Thunder by Miriam Chansey. Okay. At the end of a long sweltering day, as markets and businesses began to close for the evening, an earthquake of 7.0 magnitude shakes the capital of Haiti, Port-au-Prince. Award-winning author Miriam J. Chansey masterfully charts the inner lives of the characters affected by the disaster. Richard, an expat and wealthy bottle, water bottling executive with a secret daughter, the daughter, Anne, an architect who drafts affordable housing structures for the global NGO, a small-time drug trafficker, Le Leopold, who pines for a beautiful call girl, Sonia and her business partner, who are followed by a man they believe is the voodoo spirit of death, Didier, an immigrant musician who drives a taxi in Boston, Sarah, a mother haunted by the ghosts of her children in an IDP camp, her husband, Oliver, an accountant, forced to abandon the wife he loves, their son, Jonas, who haunts them both, and Ma Lu, the old woman selling produce in the market who remembers them all. Artfully weaving together these lives, witnesses to given, witnesses, witness is given to the desolation wrecked by nature and man. Brilliantly crafted, fiercely imagined, and deeply haunting. What Storm, What Thunder is a singular stunning record, a reckoning of the heartbreaking trauma of a disaster, and at the same time, an unforgettable testimony to the tendency of the human spirit, tenacity of the human spirit. So that's What Storm, What Thunder. It's considered literary. Next up is a nonfiction title, The Least of Us, True Tales of America and Hope in the Time of Fentanyl and Meth. So this is from the best-selling author of Dreamland. Uh, and it is, of course, about the op opioid epidemic. And hits the road to investigate these new threats, discovering how addiction is exacerbated by consumer product corporations. In a time when drug trafficking traffickers act like corporations and corporations like traffickers, he wrote, our best defense, perhaps our only defense, lies in bolstering community. Amid a landscape of despair, the author found hope in those embracing the forgotten and ignored, illuminating the striking truth that we are only as strong as our most vulnerable. So that's the least of us. Next up is fiction. And we've talked about this before. I just didn't get a copy until like last week. But this is Dava Shash Shastri's Last Day. And this is about one of the world's most, one of the world's wealthiest women who um, has always lived with her reputation in mind, 
When she is diagnosed with brain cancer at the age of 70, she decides to take her death, like all matters of her life, into her own hands. Summoning her four adult children to her private island, she discloses shocking news. In addition to having a terminal illness, she has arranged for the news of her death to break early so she can read her obituaries. As someone who dedicated her life to the arts and the empowerment of women, Dava expects to read articles lauding her philanthropic work. Instead, her death reveals two devastating secrets, truths she thought she had buried forever. And now the world knows, including her children. In the time she has left, Deva must come to terms with every decision that has led to this moment and make peace with those closest to her before it's too late. Compassionately written and chock full of humor and heart, this powerful novel examines public versus private legacy, the complexities of love, and the never-ending joys and frustrations of family. So that's Deva Chandri's last day. This isn't out yet. This comes out January 4th. The Latinist by Mark Prins. Prins? P-R-I-N-S. Prins. Okay. And of course, they've got quotes on the back instead of descriptions. Here we go. Tessa Thompson has thrived at Oxford University under the tutelage and praise of esteemed classics professor Christopher Eccles. Yet shortly before her thesis defense, Tessa learns that Chris has sabotaged her career and realizes their relationship is not all what she believed, is not at all what she believed. Driven by what he mistakes as love for Tessa, Chris has ensured that no other institution will offer her a position, keeping her at Oxford with him. His tactics grow more invasive as he determined as yeah, as he determines to prove he has her best interests at heart. Meanwhile, Tessa scrambles to undo the damage and make a startling discovery about an obscure second century Latin poet that could launch her into academic stardom, finally freeing her from Chris's influence. A contemporary reimagining of the Daphne and Apollo myth, myth the Latinist is a page-turning exploration of power, ambition, and the intertwining of love and obsession. There we go, that's the Latinist. Okay, so if you want any of these books, put the name of the book in the comments below along with your MPL location for pickup. You can choose up to two. Yeah, you can choose up to two. I see no reason why not to. I have so many books. And I will send them to your MPL location that you chose by the end of today. So probably by 5 p.m., which means that I will comment on your comment. I will reply to your comment to let you know that you got chosen. And if you're anywhere but Maine, it will probably arrive by tomorrow afternoon. Okay, so let's move on to January's hits. So I'll share my screen again. We'll go back over here. We'll do this. It'll be nice. We got slides. We got book covers. It's good times. Okay, that is bizarrely something I say to my cat all the time. It's okay, we got, we got cat food, we got litter, we got good times. All right, welcome to Tina New Book Tuesday. You've already been welcome, we've already been talking, but bears repeating. Moving into our first book, the always popular and yeah, pretty beloved Daniel Steele's new book for January is called Invisible. Okay, I think this is one of the longest descriptions of the day. Not that it matters, just so you know. Antonia Adams is the product of a loveless marriage between a beautiful young model and an aristocrat. As a child, she, aban she is abandoned in the abyss that yawns between them, blamed by her mother, ignored by her father, and neglected by both. Unprotected and unloved, she learns that the only way to feel safe is to hide from the dangers around her, drawing as little attention as possible to herself, to be invisible. In her isolation, books are her refuge and movies her escape. The day, a day spent being carried away by an unforgettable film in a dark theater is her greatest thrill. Her love of the movies turns into a dream to become a screenwriter and a summer job at a Hollywood studio. There, a famous British filmmaker notices her and suddenly she can remain invisible no longer. 
He wants to put her in a movie and make her a star. It is a dazzling opportunity, but a terrifying one, as it strips her of the camouflage that made her feel safe. She is suddenly thrust into the public eye, and even more so when they fall in love. She will never let go of her true dream of becoming a filmmaker. And if she wants to make the leap, she will have to expose herself in ways she never has before. When tragedy strikes, she must decide whether she will remain center stage or become invisible again, where she feels safest. Will she face her demons or run and hide? Right? If you're interested in invisible, it comes out January 4th. All right. We actually, for the first time ever, have two story collections that I'm going to cover, which I don't usually do story collections, but these are both from really prominent authors. The second author is really prominent. Um, it's not Patterson. And so <laughs> we'll go ahead and go through this. Let me know if that's something, if you like reading collections of short stories, they're not my thing, but if you guys want to hear about them, I'm happy to tell you about them. All right. Seasonal Work by Laura Lippman. The award-winning master of psychological suspense is in top form in this collection of diverse and diabolically clever stories. In the never before published, Just One More, a married couple longing for that old romantic spark creates a playful diversion that comes with unexpected consequences. Lippman's beloved Baltimore PI Tess Monahan keeps a watchful eye on a criminally resourceful single father in seasonal work, while her mother Judith realizes that the life of the everyday housewife is an excellent cover for all kinds of secrets. In Slow Burner, a husband's cell phone proves to be a dicey temptation for a suspicious wife. A father's hidden past piques the curiosity of a young snoop in The Last of Sheila Lock Holmes, plus seven other brilliantly crafted stories of deception, murder, dangerous games, and love gone wrong. Irrefutable evidence that Laura Lipman's riveting fiction will more than satisfy any crime reader. So if you are interested in seasonal work, it comes out January 4th. All right, Stranger's Game by the bestseller, best-selling author Colleen Coble. Tori Bergstrom hasn't been back to Georgia since she was 10, but she's happy to arrange a job for her best friend at one of her family's properties on Jekyll Island. When Tori learns that her best friend has drowned, she, know this, she knows this is more than a tragic accident. Lizbeth was terrified of the water and wouldn't have gone swimming by choice. Tori goes to the hotel under an alias trying to find answers when she meets Joe Abbott and her daughter rescuing baby and his daughter rescuing baby turtles, she finds a tentative ally. But the more they dig, the more ties they find to Tori's mother's death 20 years before. Someone will risk anything, even murder, to hide the truth. All right. If you're interested in a stranger's game, it comes out January 4th. <laughs> Remember I said there was another story collection by a very, very prominent writer? Uh, how about Agatha Christie, one of the most prominent writers in the history of the world? A Deadly Affair by Agatha Christie. This is a collection of short stories. Love can propel us to our greatest heights and darkest depths. In this new collection, of Agatha Christie short stories, witness the dark side of love, crimes of passion, games of the heart, and deadly affairs. The pulse pounding compendium features beloved detectives Hercule Perrault and Miss Marple, masters of charades, Parker Pine, the enigmatic Harley Quinn, and the adventurous Tommy and Tuppence, all ready to solve a tantalizing mystery. In the face of Helen, a night at the Royal Opera could reach a deadly crescendo for a woman caught in a dicey love triangle. Finessing the King delivers a curious ad in the personals that could mask sinister intentions. Who's in danger of getting stung in wasp nests depends on rounding up suspects and solving a murder before it even happens. And more tales that make for essential reading that Agatha fans, old and new, will simply love to death. If you are interested in reading I do think these have been published before, but if you want a collection of Agatha Christie stories, A Deadly Affair comes out January 4th. I don't know why I look. We know it's January 4th. 
I think that's the, oh, we're finally going to get to some stuff that isn't, but I think that's the big date. It's always the first Tuesday. Anyway, A Horsewoman by James Patterson and Mike Lupica. This may be a good book, but it has the shortest description of the day. So I don't know, do with that what you will. Maggie Atwood and Becky McCobb, mother and daughter, are both champion writers. They vowed to never, ever go up against one another until several tense, harrowing competitions leading up to the Paris Olympics. It's worth pointing out that Mike Lupica is a renowned sports writer, and presumably he's written about horse racing and therefore knows a lot about the topic. I do find it interesting that Patterson is now working with people who are experts in a thing that he's not an expert in, which, you know, that's a really good reason to co-author with someone. I might be feeling a little warmer towards him now because he's also co-authoring a book with Dolly Parton and she's a national treasure. So it's got to be good. I mean, come on. But anyway, if you want the horsewoman, it comes out. Nope. It comes out January 10th. I was about to tell you the wrong date. We have finally moved on from January 4th. Okay. If you'd like some more mystery, The Last House on the End of the Street by Diane Chamberlain. When Kyla Carter's husband dies in an accident while building their dream house, she knows she has to stay strong for their four-year-old daughter. But the trophy home in Shadow Ridge Estates, a new development in Sleepy Round Hill, North Carolina, will always hold tragic memories. But when she is confronted by an odd older woman telling her not to move in, she almost agrees. It's clear this woman has some kind of connection to the area and a connection to Kyla herself. Kyla's elderly new neighbor, Ellie Hockley, is more welcoming, but it's clear she too has secrets that stretch back almost 50 years. Is Ellie on a quest to right the wrongs of the past? And does the house at the end of the street hold the key? Told in dual time periods, The Last House on the Street is a novel of shocking prejudice and violence, forbidden love, the search for justice, and the tangled vines of two families. This received a star review in Publishers Weekly. If you're interested in The Last House on the Street, it comes out January 11th. All right. Let me get a sip of tea, and then we'll move on to The Good Son by Jacqueline Michard. Richard? Michard. Admittedly, I kind of like Richard better than Michard, but I have no idea how the name is pronounced. Anyway, what do you do when the person you love, when the person you love best becomes unrecognizable to you? For Thea Dimitrio, the answer is both simple and agonizing. You keep loving them somehow. Stefan was just 17 when he went to prison for the drug-fueled murder of his girlfriend, Belinda. Three years later, he's released to a world that refuses to let him move on. Belinda's mother, <clears throat> once Thea's good friend, galvanizes the community to rally against him to protest in her daughter's memory. The media paints Stefan as a symbol of white privilege and indifferent justice. Neighbors, employers, even some members of Thea's own family turn away. Meanwhile, Thea struggles to understand her son. At times, he is still the sweet boy he has always been. At others, he is a young man tormented by guilt and almost broken by his time in prison. But as his efforts to make amends meet escalating resistance and threats, Thea suspects more forces are at play than just community outrage. And if there is so much she, mm -hmm, yeah. And if there is so much she never knew about her own son, what other secrets has she yet to uncover? Especially about the night Belinda died. All right, if you are interested in The Good Son, it comes out January 18th. All right, let's get another best-selling author in here, Dean Koontz. This is Quicksilver. Let me get a little tea. Quinn Quicksilver was born a mystery, abandoned at three days old on a desert highway in Arizona, raised in an orphanage, never knowing his parents. Quinn had a happy, if unexceptional, life until the day a strange magnetism, the day of strange magnetism. It compelled him to drive out to the middle of nowhere. It helped him find a coin worth a lot of money 
and it practically saved his life when two government agents showed up in the diner in pursuit of him. Now Quinn is on the run from those agents, and who knows what else, fleeing for his life. During a shootout at a forlorn dude ranch, <laughs> he finally meets his destined companions. Bridget Ranking, as a beauty as gifted in foresight as she is with firearms, and her grandpa Sparky, a romantic novelist with an unusual past. Bridget knows what it's like to be Quinn. She's hunted too. The only way to stay alive is to keep moving. Barreling through the Sonora Desert, the formidable trio is impelled by the same inexplicable magnetism towards the inevitable. With every deeply disturbing mile, something sinister is in the rear view, an enemy that is more than a match for Quinn, even as he discovers within himself resources that are every bit as scary. Right? If you are interested in Quicksilver, it comes out January 25th. And finally, our last book of the day, Her Hidden Genius by Marie Benedict. Rosalind Franklin has always been an outsider, brilliant, but different. Whether working at the laboratory she adored in Paris or toiling at a university in London, she feels closest to the science, those unchanging laws of physics and chemistry that guide her experiments. When she is assigned to work on DNA, she believes she can unearth its secrets. Rosalind knows if she just takes one more x-ray picture, one more after thousands, she can unlock the building blocks of life. Never again will she have to listen to her colleagues complain about her, especially Maurice Wilkins, who'd rather conspire about genetics with James Watson and Francis Crick than work alongside her. Then it finally happens. The double helix structure of DNA reveals itself to her with perfect clarity. But what unfolds next, Rosalind could never have predicted. Uh, very in Marie Benedict's wheelhouse, she often writes, history is about women in science. If you are interested in her hidden genius, it comes out January 25th. All right. That is it for today. Don't forget to put a giveaway book in the comments if you want one, along with your MPL location for pickup. Uh, I have changed the name of our newsletter. It is now Tea and New Book Tuesday. Uh, the link for that is in the description below. I have already put up the Goodreads discussion post about the books that are series updates and were eliminated from today. So if you want to know if your favorite series is going to have an update in January, you might want to peruse that. And that's it. Next week, we're going to talk about yellow labels as usual. We'll get back into our routine somehow. All right, guys. Bye. See you next week.